Hi. Uh, <clears throat> I brought this hoe today because uh, it speaks to me. That's uh, kind of the magic of objects. It connects me to a profound base of reflection, a place in me. It talks to me and, it, and it's animated, it's alive, everything's alive. And it guides me to the doors of my perception. I was always a maker of things and a builder of places. At, at, at age six, I have an epiphany that there's a special place in me. And, but I needed to protect it. People were throwing boxes at me, doctor, lawyer, la, la, la. None of them had enough elbow room. Then I met an artist, and she, they gave her a big box. So I said, I'm going to be an artist. Pretty young. But the place uh, in me, I was free to imagine and invent and play and to better understand the world around me. In my place, I looked under the rocks and, you know, stuck my face in the swirling life of, in the lake. And there I learned to talk with the life. So this thing we have, we all have it. This being is really incredible. And it's full of miraculous organs of perception. And it's geared to transfer forces through us. We can call it intention. We are conduits. And we are, in essence, co-creators. We're amazing beings, and we're capable of way more than we are taught. And we are custodians or stewards or therapists, and we have a job to do. After decades in the art world, as potters, we traveled overland in Africa. And the negative space in, of the threshold of the dwelling caught our attention as mysterious. And then we began to ask about creation myths and other cosmologies, other ways of seeing the world. And this led eventually to in 89, our Fulbright uh, field research. And we lived with the Gurunsi people in, of northern Ghana for almost a year. We is my wife. She's back there. She survived this too. <laughs> and this is uh, us coming back and trying to sort through from pottery to sculpture and other things to sort out. So art was always a way to sort things out. And, and then we met uh, Abeke and Awansani and their clan, the Garunsi at Sirigu, and, and they taught us a lot about how they created meaningful place and how they, the, they sanctified the ground and they built this dwelling. It's called Where the Old Woman Cooks. And this is the womb of the family we found out. I thought it was where an old lady was going to cook breakfast. So much for my master's education in the West. And the connection, it's a connection to their clan and their ancestors and the foundation of their beings. And inside, this is a sketch from that time, of the ingredients. And the ingredients there were sanctified by the mother of all mothers and the feminine uh, arch archetype. And uh, they created order in their lives by grinding these up for rituals and other things. So these objects were all imbued with intense energy and spirituality. Back home, uh, again, witnessing the degradation of the land and our escalating individual and collective disconnection, we knew our art activity had to shift. And we, find our, we found ourselves that we're malnourished on many levels of our beings. And we're living in a holocaust of relationships. So what do we do about that? In 97, with the help of a lot of others, ideas come through us. I don't take credit. 
We found a place to test ourselves and to see if we could heal the land and find truth and beauty again with our hands and hearts and better know ourselves and share that with all who would come. This place is called Sustainable Settings. It's 20 minutes away and it's a 240-acre working ranch. We do everything wrong, by the way, and we're not going to make it if you ask our neighbors. <laughs> 25 years ago. Um, studio was always a laboratory for us. Not, uh, it was a place to explore the unknown, not a place to manufacture product. Now the ranch and the land is a laboratory. Sustainable settings is an ongoing experiment, an inquiry through the lenses of art, science, and consciousness into the nature of place. In this agrarian setting, we are alive in a creative moment, and the living soil, air, water, and celestials are now our art mediums. We asked, could we heal the land? Can we rebuild our relationships with all of the life we co-create with? The good news is, the work we have done in the last quarter century, and the data we have gathered says we can. <laughs> Hallelujah. We started with the horizontal and applied the tried and true and mixed in the ponderable alternatives, permaculture, organics, uh, farming, and what is now being called regenerative, which is, you know, like uh, crop rotations and no-till and things like that. I love the co-opting of the new words, but whatever. <laughs> That's a whole other talk. <laughs> what uh, we found that the horizontal what we needed and what it would take is a horizontal and the vertical. Without the horizontal physical ponderables that we all can knock on wood understand, the vertical metaphysical imponderables were necessary for us to pull this off. We only needed to humbly acknowledge that there was something far greater than ourselves. In our relationships, we recognized that the horizontal forms and methods were necessary but also the vertical forces that we run through us. Our will, our intentions, are the qualitative forces that we bring to the mix. How we do what we do matters. We now have nine years of third-party scientific laboratory soil test data measuring the life in the soil from the NRCS study, measuring over 40 different protocols of life, what the soil scientists call hard data. Sustainable setting soil data is in the upper 1% of 140,000 farm soil tests we have run as far as gains in soil health, rock solid data, evidence that what we're doing is working. We gather all kinds of data. How do we measure is a big question. We work with chefs and we have two Michelin starred chefs one of them is up in Aspen Bosque restaurant uh, there in Barclay Dodge. We've been collaborating with him for years. Your flavor profiles are off the charts. They're untouchable. You have a genuine taste of place. Though initially reluctant to embrace what some call woo-woo otherness, <laughs> we trusted the indications and, we, and the process. We're artists, we don't know any better. Letting go of our, the mental constructs handed to us in our conventional educations, we allowed ourselves to discover our own mapping, our own taxonomy, our own synthesis. We built our own stewardship quiver and our own intimate relationships. We discovered it isn't woo-woo, it's who-who. Who are you, microbes, fungi, protozoa? Who are you, plants, animals, and the celestials? It's a conversation. There is a language of place. Relearning the grammar, syntax, and diction of animacy is one path we found that reignites our relationships. This is the rich synchronicity 
that place science still struggles with. I mean, if you can figure out how to measure love, I'm all ears. Do I farm with the moon? You bet. <laughs> and so do you, whether you like it or not, because the cosmos is rolling by every day. And you can either harvest those subtle forces that affect life on this planet or not. It's your choice. It works. I don't know about you, but farming is hard work. And I'll take all the help I can get. <laughs> Harvesting the above and below, we build a coherence. And in this wholeness, we build meaningful places. This is agriculture. If we have learned anything in the decades of working the land and with all of the life in it, <clears throat> it is that soul and spirit are vital forces. Whatever you call it, God, source, the triumvirates, Brahma, Vishnu, Shiva, Father, Son, Holy Spirit, Christ, Buddha, Muhammad, Yahweh, the ancestors, great-grandfather, sky, great-grandmother, earth, the archetypes, whatever you call these imponderables, they are real. And they shine through us. When we understand that it is our responsibility to shine in our relationships, we gain this ability, this tool, this special place in us. It's a broadcasting device. We got it. And we can utilize to rebuild harmony and balance in our places. We are the potency of our relationships. So by all means, let the spirits speak. Along the way, <laughs> we've been told we're crazy. My advice then is to be a little crazy. It is time to reignite our atrophied organs of perception, to pause and to know ourselves again. Life is an inquiry into the nature of place, and every inquiry is an adventure. The universe is always whispering you message through song, dreams, numbers, patterns, plants, animals. That is, if we can let go of what we think we know and risk learning directly from the source. If you want to light up your places, listen to the whispers. They are there. There is wonder and there is magic. And each of you having the equipment have access. If you so desire. In this effort to unify, we thereby sanctify. We are conduits. Be a good conduit. Where's Rosie? Ah, St. Rose. This is my, my partner, Rose, and she says, uh, all of life is sacred, and you got to eat. Not me, not you, through us. That's the view from our place. <laughs>